Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in again. You're listening to the uh, review show with, from Super 564. I'm your host, Jay Long. I'm here with my co host tonight, Joe. Joe, thank you for being here. <laughs> and Miriam. Hey, you guys. <laughs> All right, you guys. Tonight we, uh, we are reviewing. Uh, from the Netflix uh, selection, uh, The Adventures of Tintin. Um, and we're also reviewing the very first episode of Under the Dome. We'll be reviewing every episode as, as they go by. Um, so, yeah, uh, I cannot believe we're going to go ahead and start with Tintin. We're going to take uh, five to ten minutes on that, and then we'll go into Under the Dome. Honestly, five you to got... ten minutes for that, and Under the Dome, we're going to spend an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so, Adventures of Tintin, I admit, that was Joe's thing. That was Joe's movie. I'm going to let him talk about it. So, Joe, tell us, give us what Adventures of Tintin is about. Um, I heard about the movie, and it had a lot of great reviews about it, uh, uh, dealing with the animation style and the way they did the movie. And, honestly, the animation was really incredible. It really uh, captivates you. Um, looks like they were using the same technology they used for um, creating the um, Avatar movie where the animation was very, very real, um, which is why I picked it. I wanted to see what it's about. The movie itself, to me, was all right. It was definitely a, um, a kid-type adventure movie. It wasn't something I was like, oh, my gosh. But the animation really helped it out. But the, there's this one particular scene where they are all um, trying to grab, uh, was it the map or something like that? And that whole, like, five to ten-minute scene made up for the whole entire movie. I think I rewound that, like, twice. <laughs> And watch that. Just the animation of just doing that, the running, and then the coming together, the two um, agents or whatever that was uh, kind of dumb agents, but they were kind of yeah. funny. The uh, pirates and like bringing in all of that kind of encased it all. But it was it was a, it was an okay movie. It was honestly not one of my favorites. Uh, it was to me, I thought like it was a poor choice of me making this movie. But at the same time, it was something that had to be seen just from the animation quality to see what they're actually able to do using real people putting them in with the computers and then creating an animation style that actually makes it really work, which actually just kind of made the dog more fun to watch than anything else. But yeah, The dog was my favorite character by far. <laughs> yes. it's, it's so I, I do have to say, Joe, um, I, you know, I agree with the animation and everything like that, but you saying that this was an okay movie, I completely disagree with that. I fell in love with this movie. I, from... <laughs> Point A to point Z, I was hooked. I was absolutely hooked. This movie, it surprised me in such a way because when you first chose this movie, I was just like, oh, Lord, what Joe's pick again? What is he having us watch? <laughs> what am I uh, What am I going to see? And so then it was like a cartoon movie. And so then I was just like, okay. So I was just like, I turned it on, and then it started up. And then I was just like, I was captivated just from the scenery and in, in, in the, uh, I think it's called cinematography, uh, in itself was just beautiful. And then when it gets to that scene that Joe's talking about, where you know they're all trying to grab the grab the uh, the, the uh, parchment or the scroll or what whatever, that was amazing. But that's not the only scene. You have to go back the scene where the pickpocket or picks pockets their their wallets. That was awesome to me too. And the camera is swiveling back and forth. There's had a lot of camera swivels. That was just really awesome. And then you go to the scene yes. where they're where they're in the actual airplane and they're trying to uh, 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 fuel the uh, the the actual airplane. That was just absolutely amazing. I think my uh, can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Okay, but my picture is gone. No, okay, I see you too. Okay, never mind. Uh, my picture was gone for me for some reason. But anyway, yeah, the scene where they're in the airplane, that was amazing. And then the scene where it did the flashback of uh, the, the uh, captain's ancestor uh, that was fighting on the ship with the red uh, red drag, dragon, I think his name mm -hmm. is. The, all those things, this, you have to understand this movie was action-packed from beginning to end. Like, it, it never was. stopped. Yeah. Every few minutes there was something else, something even even cooler to look at. And then behind the whole thing, there's this huge mystery of figuring out the, where the, the, the ship is and, and where um, where this gold is that they're trying to, trying to find. And then to find out that the captain is much better when he's drunk than when he's actually sober. <laughs> that was hilarious. It oh was. my gosh! From beginning to end, I absolutely love this movie, Joe. I thought this was your best pick that you've ever picked. 
Um, what were the see. Avengers? Huh? <laughs> well, I had already seen that one. This was new to me in a whole other way. So, I'm, I, you know, we all know that Avengers of 1010 was a cartoon that came on back in the 90s and early 90s. And so to see it being done this way, this is Steven Spielberg at its best, you guys. From storytelling to uh, the complete direction of the movie, I was hooked. Uh, Miriam, how did you feel about it? I'm with Joe as far as the animation goes. I was awed. I was like, man, that is so cool. It, it actually looks like, um, I, I guess I would say in comparison to, um, what's the name of the movie you mentioned, Joe? I can't even Avatar. think of the name of it. Avatar. It was very lifelike. Um, I, I thought, I, and I think to me, the part that got my attention the most is when the guy was doing his caricature. And his caricature yes. actually looked like the what the, yes. the Ten Ten looked like before, versus the one that they had in this movie where he looked so yes. real. And I was like, that is so cool. But the movie itself, to me, was kind of, uh, I guess, kiddish. Like, I don't know. I, I, I it's, it's like it was kiddish, and the only thing that that made it to where it could be both good for kids and adults was the fact that the dude was a, a, a drunk. <laughs> but other than that, it was and like it, it was more of a, a, a kiddish type movie. And people and, were getting uh, shot left and right. Let's not forget that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the crane battle. Yes, the battle ah, on the crane. Yeah. And I'll tell you, one scene that definitely did get me was it was a quick scene. I don't even know if you guys remember it, but they were in the desert, and the dude was was uh, reminiscing, and he was he was imagining his captain on the battle yes. and the sand when it turned into the sea. That was and cool. So that was awesome. I was See, like, oh, the you animation. Got it. The animation definitely to me was like it was on point. Um, I, I think if they had more. I don't, and I guess maybe I'm just spoiled by the, uh, the 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 shows that we watch. Even with um, like cartoon movies, it's like they make jokes um, for adults. Yeah, the kids don't really understand, and they laugh because they hear other people laughing, but the adults get it. And it didn't have that in this one that much to me, to where it didn't really grab my attention like say Shrek would have. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like they I really, I mean, the jokes that they make on Shrek uh, are funny for adults and for children. And with, I, I just, I wasn't feeling that as much in this one as was something along the lines of Shrek. And I have to say, we just we saw uh, Monsters University this week, and I don't know if you guys had planned on seeing it, but I have to tell you, we have been talking about it ever since we watched it. It is such a good movie. It is. It to me was actually better than Monsters Inc. Wow. Yes. The it original. Is a really, really, really good movie. All right. Well, um, well, just to let you guys know some fun facts about the movie. Uh, I don't know how well it did when it opened in 2011, but it did well enough for a sequel. So in 2015, ah. there will be the Adventures of Tin Tin. I guess we're gonna get to see them actually go after the uh the actual ship yes. that's on the bottom of the sea. Uh, Steven Spielberg will not be directing the second one, though, but but Peter Jackson of the Hobbit series will be directing this one, and I'm extremely excited, extremely happy. Um, and so, uh, yes, Ten Ten, Adventures of Ten Ten lives on 2015. We get to see part two. I'm All right. Happy I, I, I hate to deter, but I want to know, have any of you guys seen Kick-Ass? Yes. Uh, do you guys way. know? I am so looking forward to Kick Ass Two coming out. I saw What's the name of it. Go ahead. What was the name of it? Kick Ass. Don. <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't pay any attention to him, man. I know. It, I'm telling you, and it's funny because I wasn't gonna watch it, and because I thought it was silly, and then somebody told me they was like, "Oh man, if you haven't watched it, you are missing out." And me and Kobe watched that movie, and I was like, oh, my God, that was, like, one of the best movies ever. And then when I saw that they were doing a two, I was so excited. Yep. So I am looking forward to that. 
Uh, I don't know yeah. if that's on um, Netflix, but I'm definitely going to have to check and see if so. The next time I recommend a movie, it will be that. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, the uh, fun fact about about the movie is that Jim Carrey is in the second one. Yes. Uh, he plays one of the main, uh, main uh, I guess it's the main superheroes. Yeah. But oh, Baxter, yeah. huh? Is he a hero or a villain? That's what I'm. Uh, that's what I'm trying to figure out. She. Uh, 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 I think he. He looks like he might be a villain, but I think that he's actually a part of their team. Uh, part of the good guy team. I'm but gonna tell you with the with to to me. Um, because we just recently watched Dark Knight Rises, and to me, I'm gonna say Catwoman is like ambivalent because she can do good things and she does bad things. And yeah. I'm thinking that that will be more or less what, what Jim Carrey's character it may be like. like in this movie. He, you know, he may do some things that, that are selfish, but at the same time, um, he, he will let things that are up for the greater good, and he'll do, do the thing that is that's for the greater good versus being selfish. So yeah. I, I'm thinking that he'll be kind of um, ambivalent as far as his role in the movie goes. Exactly. No, you're. I completely agree. It looks like he might be that character. And uh, the biggest thing about it, though, is the, the the big controversy. I know you. I know you love the behind the scenes, Miriam. Is yes. the fact that he refuses to promote the movie. Yeah. Um, he he I Jim. It. Car- yeah, Jim Carrey refuses to uh, uh, promote the movie because because uh, of all of the violence in it. He said he did the role before this Handy Hook Elementary School thing, uh, and so he's shooting a lot of guns in this, and, and he does not support it in any way, form, or fashion. So he will not be doing any interviews or anything about the movie when the movie comes out, um, unfortunately. And so, uh, and, I mean, uh, it's, so it's a lot of controversy. It's, you know, take it as you will. The directors are not upset at him at all. They still love him and, and love all of the work that he did. They said his, him in this movie was some of his absolute best work. And they said that everyone's going to really love seeing him in this movie. Uh, I'm, good. I'm, I'm laughing because I just posted a clip about um, Jim Carrey um, from In Living Color on my page this week. And I mean, I was rolling. He was doing Imposter. And he was like, uh, it, it's funny because we had went out to dinner and the lady asked the kids, did they want fries with their meal? And all I could think was, do you want fries with that? <laughs> a hot apple pie with that? Drive around mine. <laughs> and I came home, I found that clip, and I watched it, and I was killing myself laughing. I miss Jim Carrey, so I'm glad that he's actually um, coming out with something this year. So that that's Absolutely. always a good thing. Absolutely. All right, you guys, it's time. It's time for Under the Dome, you guys. I've been <laughs> dying to talk about this uh, ever too. since I saw it a couple of hours ago. Um, and so, yes, uh, you guys. So, basically, I'm going to – I'll go ahead and introduce this because Under the Dome uh, was the 1,100-page book by Stephen King that I read. And i got to tell you, it – was my it was my under the dome was my introduction into Stephen King. It was the ah. very first Stephen King book I've ever read, and it's the book that hooked me and made me a Stephen King fanatic. The man can do no wrong in my eyes. Um, this book was absolutely amazing. If you have not checked it out, you need to go uh, check it out. It's been on uh, the when the everyone found out the show was coming out, it went back on bestseller. Uh, because like, everyone wanted to read the book uh, before the, the show came on. And there are a lot of differences, There are, a couple, and I'll talk about that uh, later on in, in, in the show, of the differences between the book and the movie that I've already seen. Um, but I have to know, you know, uh, Under the Dome is about a, a huge giant dome plops down right on top of the city, um, basically, and you have to, uh, it, it keeps <laughs> everyone on the inside of the, uh, inside of the city. So, uh, how do you guys feel? I want to know your impressions of Under the Dome. I already know that I loved it from reading the book, so I'll go ahead with Joe. Joe, how do you feel about the first episode of Under the Dome and, and where it takes us? Well, first, we're going to have a moment of silence for the lady that lost her hand. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Man. Oh, next. Oh. I um, saw that. I was just like, good Lord. And how about the, the, 
the airplane that still got me. The, the yes. airplane. Uh, yes. It was no. the airplane that got me. What got me? Um, the cow. Was, um, I keep asking myself this weird question, like, how deep is it? Like, has anyone dug? Like, everyone's ah. looking above. No one's looking below, and then you see the line. You see how um, you see how thick the dome is, and it's very, very thin, mm -hmm. which begs that question as well. Because if something that powerful and, and that incredible is usually very, very thin, but you see the distance between the two, and then on top of that, the the shocking factor of when you touch it, it shocks you, and how all the electronic devices are kind of out, except for the lady's house who has a generator and a couple of other things that are still able to run and things. So, and then you have all the, you know, the interesting questions. I know you're going to bring all this stuff up because it's a lot to talk about, oh, um, yeah. the hidden secrets and the hidden, hidden gems of it. But um, having, it's so funny having uh, Laputis, I think that's his name, from the, uh, the the police officer right there that was on Lost. Um, oh, in the my show. gosh. And uh, he's the first thing he's dealing with is seeing a plane crash. And I'm like, ah, <laughs> like it brings that back. Um, but just the whole uh, cast of this whole entire thing looks very interesting, right down to the cra crazy uh, white boy teenager. Um, Woo, crazy that's teenager. Gonna something that's going to be um, really interesting. It grabbed me. Matter of fact, Cole watched it with me. Uh, she loves it. Uh, she hasn't finished the first episode yet. Otherwise, she probably would have been on here to, to take a look at it. But it's oh. definitely <laughs> something worth checking out. Yeah, tell Cole she's welcome anytime. Anything that she sees with you would be awesome to have her on the show. Um, but yes, no, she doesn't uh, like you, so she's not gonna come on. <laughs> yeah, get, and, and then the uh, the some of the mysteries that that were revealed. You know, the dome drops down, uh, and uh, basically uh, the radio show still has power. Propane tanks have been brought into the city. Nobody knows why, but they know that uh, the. Uh, the sheriff and, and Big Jim, who is the mayor of the city, have something to do with it. Um, Ma Big Jim has been the mayor for a really long time. Everyone, no one, uh, no one basically runs for mayor because they already know he's going to win. Um, he has that kind of power in the city, um, which is a foreshadowing. But he um, finding out crazy boy, crazy boy who is who has now kidnapped uh, his ex girlfriend. Uh, and 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 put her in the bunker. Uh, he is actually Big Jim's son. Yeah. Uh, and so it's just a lot of mysteries were revealed in in just the very first episode, and and a great cliffhanger at the very end of the episode, uh, finding out about uh, what happens to the deputy sheriff. Yeah. Um, yes, and and the. Uh, uh, his officer that that is okay. Listening. Now I have to know because me and Cobra were debating. I said that that everybody knew that her husband was um, having an affair, and I believe she knew that he was having an affair too. But she was in denial about it, and um, he thinks that what happened is when she went when the, when her husband went missing, that he was dead. And and not because um, he had been not working. He hadn't been working Sundays um, at the hospital for a while because he was sleeping around. Mm. But I say that he that was before that when he went missing, it was because this guy killed him. Now what I want to know is why did the guy kill him? And who is he? And you know what what is what is? And now he's at the house with this woman. And he knows that her husband's dead because he killed him. <laughs> so I when I, when you said it was a, a a good cliffhanger, I am inclined to agree with you one hundred percent. And so yeah, absolutely. And and there and and I I was surprised at how many mysteries they were able to bring out just in the first episode. There's a lot of stuff uh, that you won't find out till much later. But they talked about it very for a split second in this episode. Joe, is there anything uh, in the episode that that you would that you heard briefly or, or that you I heard talked about that that one mystery that jumped out that you personally you're just like I have to know where that is going. Yeah, the fact that there were two black people in the whole entire town. Ah! One black people was even a part of the town. <laughs> and yeah, she's the first one to say something. It's terrorists. I'm like, really? Um, <laughs> no. Oh, that was what I wanted to. Did you know that um, the black lady, the, the, the ball lady, she was on True Blood? 
and the woman who reported to the reporter about the the propane tanks that she saw being brought into the town, she was she that was that's Hoyt's mom from True Blood. Oh wow! Yeah, I, I was like, that is so cool. <laughs> yeah, that black lady with the bald head, she's in a lot of sci-fi stuff. I've seen yeah, her multiple times in different shows. Genre. She was uh, she was on the series Hawthorne um, with Jada Pinkett, and um, she's played in some several lawyer shows. Uh, but she is like what I'm seeing is the embodiment of playing an actual black woman. There's a lot of shows that come on nowadays where you don't really see um, a nationality stand out as much. But with her, her hairstyle and her communication <laughs> and the way she talks, she really shows. Okay, this is how a black woman is supposed to sound in regular life as opposed to sometimes how it's done on some of the shows that we watch that have the majority of a different nationality um, in the cast, which is normal um, by now, but it kind of just brings something new to the table. Like you're seeing more Spanish, you're seeing more Indian, you're seeing more Asian in the shows, but and most of these shows in the past, they wouldn't really act like themselves. It would be this offbeat thing that's just like kind of like the token character. But I'm noticing her, um, what she's choosing to do in most of her shows is play the true role of how a female black woman should be acting in certain situations and that really showcases her talent and her ability to actually bring it forth because now I think this is the first time I've ever seen her playing a lesbian so she's a lesbian um, with a daughter um, with her wife and then having to sit there and figure out what's going on so now for the first time she's in a sci-fi environment but she's playing a normal character as opposed to just playing a normal character in a normal situation, like a hospital or something, yeah. and, or playing a sci-fi character and being very sci-fi-esque. But this is like yeah. a regular town, and you, you have no idea what's going on. So seeing her play this role, I'm like, this was perfect for her. I have not read the book. Um, it makes me want to read the book. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I think I'll probably wait until the show is over, and then I might go back and read the book when I'm done with Dresden Files. But... This show really grabs you in the first episode. Stephen King has an ability of grabbing you with five million questions that you definitely want answered and yeah. not answering any of those questions. Um, only Until with like other the last questions. Two pages. Yeah, so he'll he'll <laughs> he'll feed down those it's like let's say it's a thousand questions when it starts. By the end of the second to the last episode, there's only one real question that needs to be answered, and then that's answered. But because of the way he whittles it down, he never really answered any of the questions. But you're satisfied with what's happened, and you get your big finale ending that finishes everything. And then you, have to, you go back and you look at it, you're like, oh, my gosh, I didn't see it. He never ends it the way you kind of wanted to because it's kind of like M. Night Shyamalan, how his endings are just, like, totally offbeat. You don't expect it. it well, at least it's old stuff. But, like, with this one, it's like you kind of get that. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the dome is why it's there because the first thing that had me was the fact that everybody that was on the other side were wearing suits they were wearing this uh the hazmat suits and i'm like that what that intrigued me because they're on the outside of the dome they're fine so why are they near this dome and they're wearing hazmat suits but at the same time the way they're going about it is if they knew something was going to happen gotcha as, uh, and I, uh, like I said before, there's a lot of, lot of mysteries going on, a lot of things, including the fact that two of the kids in the entire show uh, had seizures and ended yeah. up set, reciting the same words yeah. from their mm -hmm. mouths during those seizures. Mm -hmm. That's pretty crazy. Oh, my yep. God. That was that was one of the things. I'm like, um, what did yeah. they know and why are they special? Why did they have these seizures? when nobody else did. So that was definitely something that, that caught my attention, too. And what did you, uh, Miriam, and what did you, is there, is there any mystery that jumped out at you that you said, of all the things, I want to know more about this particular thing? I'm going to tell you, I think it, it, was, it wasn't a question so much as, I was like, damn, when they did that, split that cow in half. <laughs> oh, my God, like, yeah. Now that is a side of beef. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, after that, I was just like, I put down the phone, I shut the computer down, and I mean, at that point, I was like, okay, I cannot miss anything. So, I, as far as the question goes, I want to know because I don't think the girl um, that's being kept in a bunker, she wasn't living with her family. So I want to know how long it's going to be before they find out that this crazy dude uh, 
took her and put her in the uh, in the bunker. Mm. And uh, and and just to to bring out, uh, I know some of the two of the differences, um, in in uh, in the book. Uh, well, actually, I think three of the differences. Um, that lesbian couple, they're not in the book. Had a feeling. Ah. Not in the book. Uh, <laughs> number two, uh, his kidnapping the girl and taking her into the bunker never happened. Seriously? Not in the book. And number three, the dome itself, uh, you know how uh, they can't hear each other from the other side? Yeah. They can in the book. In the book, they can, if they scream uh, really loud, they can mm. hear uh, the other people. It's very faint, but they can actually talk to each other back and forth. In the book, okay. Like you, so, you want to get the book for real? Yeah. No, I was like, man, I want. And I mean, I can tell you, I was enraptured, enraptured with this series because I, I, I did a search to see how many episodes were in the miniseries. So I was like, oh man. Yeah, it's only like thirteen, I believe. It. Yes, exactly yeah. thirteen. And I was like, oh man. Oh, so, awesome! Yeah. I was, I thought it was gonna be like a. A two or three uh, thing like he usually does, but this is actual like a like BBC, a whole entire series. Exactly. Yeah. Yep, I was so like uh, when we watch House right? of Cards. If you, if you watch House of Cards, the BBC version, there's only like it's only uh, three seasons, and each season is four episodes for mm -hmm. a whole entire series, as Are opposed to we serious? watch twelve episodes, and that was just one season for us. So how they do their season you all the details. They don't have time for all that fluff that they do in most of these shows, like when we were watching um, 24 or any of these other shows that we're usually watching um, that has all these episodes that kind of are very, very pointless. They don't do those episodes. They get straight to the point. So this is definitely going to get straight to the point with these episode arcs, and it's going to end it in a perfect way, which I love. I, I love the idea that it's that many episodes. I honestly thought it was going to be three or four, and that was fine with me. But to get 13 episodes, I know each one's going to be just as important as the last one. Yep. And it's going to be very entertaining to watch. I'm just so sad that I signed up with you guys to watch one episode a week as opposed to saving up like five or six episodes. <laughs> yeah. That's my only sad part. All right, and going into the future, um, something for you guys to, to, to keep in mind and it, it, he said it briefly in, in the episode, you may have missed it, but something to definitely uh, keep in mind and, and to, to keep on your minds, uh, a mystery that, that may have been uh, passed over. Is the gas? The, huh? The gas trucks? No, I mean, I think they brought that out perfectly, but remember the boy that had the, the seizure? Uh -huh. Yes. Right before he had the seizure, he said, uh, the dude says, what are you doing? And he says, you know this dome is is very powerful. I'm trying to see if there has a it has a power source, and it may be coming from inside the dome. That's something to definitely keep in mind as you go forward into the into the show and into these episodes. I couldn't believe he said that on the first episode. I think that's something that that that's very uh, amazing that he said that. And I personally am looking forward to. Uh, all of the differences because there's a lot of stuff that like with the kidnapping and and the the lesbian couple and and things like that i honestly uh i'm gonna be surprised too like i don't know how any of this stuff is gonna end because of all of the differences that you we automatically see right now um and so yeah i think it's gonna be is the book that the police officer died that soon huh in the book that the the main police officer is that did he did his pacemaker explode um, I know exactly what happened, but before I say anything, I want to <laughs> see the second episode because I don't want to ruin or give anything away. Okay. Um, Excellent. And so, yeah. I can live with that. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's watch the second episode before I answer that. But uh, just to let you guys know, if, if you were wondering whether or not it's a hit, 13 episodes, uh, I thought that that was very fitting. The very first episode, uh, can you guys... Still see me? Yes. Uh, oh, okay, sorry, my kind of went off for a second. The, the first episode, thir thirteen. Uh, uh, the first episode premiered to over thirteen to fourteen million viewers were sitting down and watching Under the Dome when it first premiered. Um, and so ABC was just like, awesome. "Those are 
amazing ratings, especially for uh, for any show, but to have Stephen King and Steven Spielberg's production company do the, the show. Uh, and and to have both of them come together for those type of viewers, that's exactly what they wanted. So uh, whether it went uh, in my mind, I'm thinking however they wanted it to end, they just extended it. <laughs> so uh, whatever, I think we're gonna get more episodes than we bargained for. But yeah, I'm really excited. I'm really happy, and I'm I'm currently reading uh, Joyland, and with the, the premiere of this, they are already in talks for. Uh, uh, a mini series of the book he came out with right after Under the Dome, which was eleven twenty two sixty three. Uh, Guy tries to change uh, uh, the fact that JFK died. He goes back in time and tries to change, uh, stop JFK from being shot, which was uh. another amazing book. Uh, but they're already in talks to do a mini series for that one as well. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited. I'm so happy for Stephen King. This is awesome. If you're listening, Stephen King, congratulations. This is awesome. You needed a, a great show or movie out there, and this is it. All right, you guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be back next week for the second episode. Chris was supposed to choose the movie tonight, but he couldn't because he couldn't be here. He told me to go ahead and choose this movie. He'll choose the next one. So, I wanted to choose Avengers because Avengers is now on Netflix, if you didn't know. Um, but we already <laughs> chose Avengers for one of our movies in the past, so I'm going to go with something different. Everyone keeps telling me about this movie. I have not seen it yet. I think it's going to be something awesome. It was a book first, um, and everyone started piling in to get the book once the movie came out because they said it's that great. It's called John Dies at the End. Uh, and basically, uh, it's a movie that, uh, that just came out. Um, what, 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 why, why, why are you shaking your head, Joe? No, I wasn't shaking my head. I thought I heard something and it scared me. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Okay, John Dies at the End. Um, amazing, amazing movie. It's a little bit kooky. It's one of those kooky sci-fi movies to where... Um, you're just like, wait, what's going on? And, and it's definitely for the fans of uh, of a sci-fi uh, fictional drama. Uh, but they were just basically the tagline is, you already know what's going to happen at the end, so you might as well just enjoy the movie. John dies at the end. So, uh, so uh, <laughs> basically, I am dying to see this movie because they give you the ending in the title, and that makes me really want to see it. It was an amazing book, people have said. So, uh, so yeah, John Dies at the End is going to be our movie for next Sunday on uh, Netflix. And we will be reviewing episode two of Under the Dome. Cannot wait to see that. All right, you guys, I want to thank everyone for being a part of the show. Thank you, Joe, for coming on tonight. It was a pleasure being here, especially after almost dying this week. So good to be alive. Oh, God, I don't even want to know. Thank you, Miriam, for being here as well. You're welcome. Thank you guys for having me, and thank you for telling me about Under the Dome. I will definitely, I just looked, I was looking up the, um, the audio book as you guys were talking. <laughs> 34 yeah, hours me too. Long. 34 hours, yeah. Yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> it took me eight months, even more than 34 hours. I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how about um, my 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 oldest daughter is reading Gone with the Wind, and that book is like eleven eleven hundred pages too. So she's been reading it for a while, and oh, I'm sorry. like, good luck with that. <laughs> mm. Oh, he's picking the book up. Think so. Ah, I was like, uh, I forgot. I actually have the book. This is the book right here. Uh, one thousand oh pages, and they should have gave it to you under a dome. What? They should have given you the book <laughs> under a dome. Under a dome. <laughs> yeah, that would have been cool. Really amazing book, you guys. Really worth the read. Got to go check this out. It's amazing. It's taken all my strength just to fold it up. But uh, yeah, you guys. Uh, thank you so much for listening. You can find this show on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Google Plus, iTunes, YouTube, right here. Go to where. Uh, go to your corner of the internet. Type in SUPAFI64, S-U-P-A-F-I-64, and we will most likely, we will be there, you guys. Don't forget, we love you. God bless you. Have a great night. Keep fiction alive. Keep uh, supporting your, your TV shows and your favorite movies. That's the only way they're going to stay on the air. My name is Jay Long, your official host of the SUPAFI64 Network, and I'm signing off, you guys. <laughs>